Hey there folks, in just a few months in February, the NHL will be sending their top players to the Winter Olympics in China, and today we are going to be making our Team Canada roster predictions. And before we get started, I want you to give me your hottest pick in the comments. Who do you think will make the team that no one else thinks will make the team? Maybe a guy like Bo Horvat or Yanni Gourd or whoever else you want. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood maybe might be an interesting pick. Uh, so give me your hottest takes in the comments below before we get started, but let's start it off. This is the mystical void of the roster. And to start off, we're starting off the goaltenders and I'm starting off with Carey Price as my number one goalie. Now there's a couple, there's a couple options, you know, there's him. And then my second goaltender who we'll get to both could end up being starters uh, for this squad. But I went with Carey Price who has clearly been on a bit of a decline, especially in the regular seasons over the past couple of years, but he's still one of the best goalies in the world when he absolutely has to be, right? We saw that his unreal performance in the playoffs this year, especially in the first three rounds, uh, basically carrying Montreal to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, and then even back in like 2016, which was, you know, almost five years ago now, uh, it was five years ago now in the World Cup, uh, where you went 5-0 and with a 957 save percentage the last time we actually got to saw, got to see best on best uh, hockey players playing against each other. So as long as he doesn't have a full on collapse to start the regular season here, I think he'll be locked in to at least one of the three spots. And I think he'd be really contending to be the starter with Mark Andre Fleury. Now, Fleury was the Vesna Trophy winner from last year. He had a 928 save percentage. He should be an absolute lock for this team. He had a 918 in the playoffs. Uh, he's another veteran. He's going to be 37 years old by the time we get to the Olympics, but it's going to be really tough to leave him off this roster unless he has a really, really bad start to the season with Chicago. Um, but I think he'll be fine and I think he will make the team and him and Price should both be locks and we'll see which of them gets the actual starting role. Uh, the third string goalie is where it actually does get a little bit interesting because there's a few options. You have guys like Kemper, Bennington, Blackwood, although he fell off a little bit this year. My pick, if it will let me show it, <laughs> my pick will be Darcy Kemper. Um, this goalie is really going to only be there in like case of emergency, right? Like maybe in the game against China, who's in the same group as Canada and the U.S. and Germany. Um I like Kemper here the most, but his limited playoff experience might have uh, the coaching staff and the and the management group going with a guy like Bennington, who won a Stanley Cup two years ago in 2019. Um, and especially, you know, Doug Armstrong is the GM of the team. He's the GM of the St. Louis Blues. Might be a little bit of a little bit of, of a, you know, make him lean towards Bennington a little bit. But I like Kemper here. Uh, let me know if you think otherwise. Now let's go on to the defense. Uh, I'm starting off with Shea Theodore and Dougie Hamilton. A and look, these are, might not be the lines. These might not be the actual groupings, but I'm picking my eight defensemen to make the team, my 14 forwards to make the team. They might not line up the way I want to, uh, but I think these are the guys that are at least going to make the team. So Shea Theodore had an offensive explosion last year with the Golden Knights. He had 42 points in 53 games, which is absurd for a defenseman. He finished sixth in Norris Trophy voting. Uh, and then you put him with Dougie Hamilton, who was absolutely elite last year, fourth in Norris Trophy vo uh, voting. That's just a stacked, stacked, stacked first pair. And then the second pair, I want that youthful offensive exuberance. Give me Thomas Shabbat. Give me the stud Kale McCarr. You get two extremely dynamic defensemen. You have McCarr, who finished second. In Norris Trophy voting, just behind Adam Fox, he had 44 points last season. Thomas Shabbat playing with a struggling Ottawa Senators team, putting up 31 points last season. They might not play together just because they are more offensively focused, um, but man, they would be a, a very fun grouping to watch. My third pair, Morgan Riley, Alex Petrangelo. Morgan Riley is an interesting one because... Leaf fans have some heat on him. He's in a contract year going into this year, so he's going to get a big, big pay bump next year. Because of that, I could see Morgan Riley coming off to an absolute blazing start this season, uh, trying to build up that contract value for his, uh, for his next contract, which might move him up the rankings into the Olympic team uh, selection process. Um, I expect him to earn a spot here alongside Petrangelo, who... I uh, had a decent year with the Knights last year, um, and I think he'll be just a really good guy to have on your third pairing on this roster. And my my extras 
are going to be Darnell Nurse and Jared Spurgeon. Um, I'm leaving out guys like Drew Doughty, uh, Aaron Ekblad, uh, Jacob Chikrin, uh, Adam Pellick, I think is an interesting choice. Out of that group, I think I like Pellick the most as a maybe a, a sleeper pick to make his way onto the roster if they do want to go with a bit more defensive, uh, like dynamic guy who can just shut things down, right? There's so much offensive firepower on this team that a guy like Adam Pellet could sneak into that roster, especially with Barry Trotz being on the coaching staff. Uh, but my picks are Nurse and Spurgeon. Let's get to the forwards, though. The forwards are where the fun is. And this is this might not be the line that gets the most minutes, but in my mind, it is just a an absolute lock. Sidney Crosby centering Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. This was a line that teamed up in 2016 in the World Cup of Hockey, and they were insane. Uh, the line had 25 points combined in those six games. Since then, Brad Marchand has had three seasons in a row where he's been on pace for 100-plus points if he played 82 games. Uh, Patrice Bergeron just continues to excel as one of the best two-way forwards in the in the NHL. Um, they might not get top-line minutes. They might be a little bit below the my next unit that I'm going to touch on, but... This is just a line that can't go wrong. You can put them out there at any part of the ice. They're going to score a ton of points, uh, and it's going to be a blast to watch. My second line is just speed and offense, and it's young, and it's exciting, and it's Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid, and Mitch Marner. Now, I can hear the arguments of moving McKinnon down to 3C and moving a guy like Huberto up to this line. You could have a Huberto, McDavid, Marner. Um, but I really like the idea of just stacking this second line uh, because you can have <laughs> literally two of the fastest skaters in the world in Nathan McKinnon and Connor McDavid with Mitch Marner on their flank. You get pure offense, every power play, throw those three out there, every offensive zone face off, throw those three out there. Um, it would just be an amazingly fun grouping to watch. You have the really ridiculous speed. You have great finishing in McKinnon and McDavid. You have a great setup man in Mitch Marner. It's just going to be fast. It's going to be fun. Uh, and I would love, love to see this. My third line is going to be Huberto, Point, and Stone. Now, again, Huberto could move up. You could bump Point over and you could go like Point, McKinnon, Stone, which again would be an insane third line to have ever. Um... But I, I have him just with, I have Huberto with Point uh, and Stone, who uh, really good two-way forwards. Obviously, Mark Stone uh, always gets a little bit of Selkie love every year. Um, the, you can put these guys at anywhere on the ice, right? You can have a couple of these, these guys penalty killing. You can have these guys out there in defensive zone draws, offensive zone draws. They're going to make something happen when they're on the ice. Uh, it's just an absolutely stacked third line, right? That's all I really have to say about this. And let's go to my fourth line, where we're going for a little bit more veteran defensive two-way kind of style here uh a solid a solid fourth line in ryan o'reilly mark shifley and sean couturier um again you can put these guys on both ends of the ice right you can put these guys out there for a defensive zone draw you have two really good face-off guys in shifley and o'reilly uh and i i just it just seems like an easy pick to have because uh, there's already so much firepower in your first three lines i i like having these three out there for your defensive zone starts my extras <clears throat> this is where the hot takes sort of come in. Um, I am not in love with Bo Horvat at the spot. I am biased towards Bo Horvat as a Canucks fan. You guys know that, but I think they might lean towards selecting him, even though he might not be the best choice. Now, my main snub here, the person who I would like to sub in is Matt Barzell because Matt Barzell is excellent. He's very dynamic, but he's very good offensively. Um, my thought here is this coaching staff, when looking at sort of the extra guys to come in in case of emergency, uh, they, they might want more veteran leader, good Ontario boys, like Canadian kind of style, right? Uh, John Tavares, Bo Horvat, you know, two leaders on their teams. They can slot into any role. Um, I am biased. But I think Horvat also has a chance to really put up some numbers early in the season, playing with a guy like Connor Garland, uh, as opposed to the guys he's played with in the past, uh, which might give him a little bit of a bump. 
Uh, but I would not be mad if I saw, you know, a Matt Barzell get that spot uh, from Horvat or any of these spots, really, because Matt Barzell is a really good player. But I'm sure you guys have other takes. You know, let me know in the comments, uh, where did I go wrong on my roster here? What would you change? No need to be hostile. No need to call me an idiot. We're just having a conversation here. But I do want to know um, what you would change in my lineup. Maybe some of the lineups. Maybe you would like to see Huberto on that second line or move that Crosby line down a touch. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, and while we're here, uh, shout out to my backstage and goat members, uh, Lucas, the goat member, uh, with the big, uh, the, the big membership. If you want to be on this credit screen or get some other perks for our live streams, uh, and in the comment sections, you can click the join button down below to check out those options. Completely optional up to you. Uh, we're going to be doing this exact same thing with the U S roster in a couple of days. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button, leave a comment, do all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.